Some people may be triggered, some may not. This is a video not based on my opinion. This is from the fighters and the fans' perspective. This is a fight that Rigo absolutely wanted, and his legacy depended on it. The Cuban fight fans thought for the longest that Donair was ducking Rigan Miao. Clashes between Cuban fight fans and Filipino fight fans were definitely showing their presence online. Besides the late knockdown, Rigo took Donair to school, dominating the fight. This guy is terribly prepared, just terribly. I don't know if he hit his feet there, but what? I don't think for a second that Nonito Donaire ever fully understood what he was up against there tonight. It's just that Rigandau is all that, and everything his amateur record suggested is true. In 1998, Joppy faced a well, I mean, well past his prime, Roberto Duran, who was 47 years old. This fight was magically sanctioned by the WBA for the title. From the first round and on, it was clear that this fight was a huge mismatch. Joppy completely putting in an unnecessary beatdown on Duran. After the fight was stopped in the third round, Joppy celebrates like he just beat Duran or the best fighter in the division. You would have thought he won the goddamn undisputed title. Karma will catch up to Joppy three years later. Joppy will receive one of the worst beatings in middleweight championship history against Tito Trinidad to lose the title. What can I say? The man, the myth, and the legend. With the crazy buildup to this fight, this win was so satisfying that he couldn't help to mention it every time he had the chance on air. 80,000 at Wembley Stadium. You've talked about Wembley Stadium. I mean, Wembley Stadium fights don't happen that often. I boxed there, I don't know if you know. Did you? <laughs> but anyway. For me to land perfectly on George Groves' chin and flatten him in front of 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium, and millions watching across the world. It was just unbelievably satisfying. Brilliant, best moment of my career. To ask you, Floyd, if you don't mind, in my last fight, before I, before I knocked out George Groves at Wembley Stadium in front of 80,000 fans, I worked. Which spawned many memes and a dope commercial for the Joshua Klitschko fight. Unfortunately, I cannot find that commercial, but it's a must watch. After two close, bitter defeats against Manny Pacquiao, when Marquez knocked Pacquiao out in their fourth fight, not only it was the most satisfying win of Marquez's career, but also for Marquez's fans to the point that no one even bothered considering a fifth fight. Llevaba mucho trabajo, llevaba mucho desempeño, mucho coraje por lo que me habían hecho en las tres peleas anteriores. This was also incredibly satisfying for the Mayweather fan base to where in the build up to the Mayweather fight from 2012 to 2015, the Marquez fight was completely used as leverage in a debate. In 2008, Hopkins lost a close decision against the legendary Joe Calzaghe. For some reason, boxing writers and media grossly predicted it would be an easy win for Kelly Pavlik. Hopkins dominated the fight and made Pavlik look like a tuna. Hopkins, after the fight, would walk over to the media section and stare down the riders who doubted him. So I explained the situation in far greater detail in my video, Boxing's Biggest Betrayals. In a short review, here's what happened. 
Martinez wins the WBC title. Martinez is to face the WBC mandatory, Sebastian Zvik. HBO didn't think the fight was worthy, making Martinez fight Sergey instead. Martinez gets stripped by the WBC. HBO says the Sergey fight, the matchup they wanted, was not HBO worthy. Chavez Jr. vs. Zvik for the WBC title on HBO. So you can see here, Martinez was not only screwed by HBO, but also screwed by the WBC. They lie, they're cheap, they, they're corrupt, and especially when it comes to the Chavez family, because Jose Suleiman is the godfather of Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. The tensions were strong between Martinez and the WBC, and later Chavez Jr., who escalated the situation for the lows, pretty much, spawning a bitter rivalry. Testo la cobardía. Vergonzosa cobardía con la que se comporta Julio César Chávez Jr., con la que se comporta su entrenador Freddy Roach, el promotor Bob Aron, evitando cada día una pelea conmigo y construyendo día tras día un boxeo de mentira. No volveré a representar al Consejo Mundial hasta que no se obligue a hacer la pelea titular que fue votada por unanimidad en la pasada convención. Yo creo que es increíble que esto sea una reivindicación, no cuando son ellos mismos los que incumplen su propia votación. Margarito won the first fight brutally, but later the next year, he was caught cheating in the Mosley fight with loaded hand wraps. When I checked the pad and it felt hard, the commission flipped it open and a block fell out of it. We checked the other hand, it was a block there too. I thought I blew the fight. Because I felt like they were taking him to jail. I thought that was the attempted assault. I thought he was going to the joint. This raised the question, did Margarito cheat against Cotto? An investigation was followed, and there is definite proof that Margarito and his team was guilty of tampering with the hand wraps. For Cotto though, justice has not been served. He wanted to avenge that irreversible loss on his resume. In December 2011, he had that chance. He bullied Margarito around and gave him the beating he deserved. I end this off to one of the most biggest, most satisfying L's in boxing for part one. That goes to the resignation of CJ Ross. On June 2012, and just barely a year later in 2013, CJ Ross scored by far two of the most controversial decisions in boxing. With Pacquiao Bradley and Mayweather Canelo, the Mayweather Canelo fight was the nail in the coffin. We have a majority decision to hear the score totals. Judge at ringside, CJ Ross scores about 114 to 114, even a draw. Overruled by judges Dave Murray. Sign that L because there's no rebounder from that. She scored the fight a draw. How, when, and why? What fight was she watching? A judge may make a fuck up, but not twice in a row within a short time where that last bad decision is still fresh in people's heads. She screwed over Pacquiao and she screwed over Floyd. CJ Ross, that criminal, that, that corrupt or incompetent, whatever you want to call her, I don't know what she is, but this is the second time she's done this. There will be no lineup tomorrow whether or not she will be reprimanded by this commission or any commission. Boxing is unregulated. It has no national commission like the other sports, and it's destroying itself. And as much power Floyd and Al Heyman has in boxing, you just believe that lady will never judge a fight again. And that's exactly what happened. And on top of that, this is the most satisfying L's in boxing. For more videos like these, be sure to like, and if you're new, subscribe. What's your most satisfying L in boxing? Leave a comment. I'm Alfa Sancho, and I'm out.